Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video. Myself, Amata, hope you're having an amazing day. Our first topic to get stuck right into today is some very interesting comments from the Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger. He recently sat down for an interview with the financial analyst, Pierre Faraju. Hopefully I pronounced that name correctly. Apologies if not. And of course, you can find their interview linked below. I am going to be merely skimming what the, he and Pat discussed. Anyway, so obviously the Intel CEO discussed numerous things, but the main thing I want to focus on is their strategy for the consumer client and data center segments, and the main things from here are of course Alder Lake and the XE HPG Arc GPUs, which there obviously is a fair amount of excitement surrounding. Now obviously in the CPU market, which I am going to focus on first, Intel have struggled to compete against AMD and of course Ryzen. You know, AMD had their Zen moments where they just kind of came out with this very impressive architecture and it began the start of this huge turnaround for the company and they have just been on an absolute tear since then and Intel have again struggled to compete against Ryzen. So one of the questions that Pierre asked Pat was will there be a Zen moment for Intel and his answer is actually very interesting. He said quote we have a number of things going on over here we are rolling out the heterogeneous architecture that is part of Alder Lake where we have big and little cores you know AMD only has one. We'll have a higher performance and a more energy efficient version of the core, pretty compelling. We'll lay out major vector enhancement stuff. We have our GPU architecture where we're going to start being in a position to really put pressure on NVIDIA for the first time forever. And we are laying out our IPU architecture when we start getting our smart NICs and smart network networking fabrics. So three major architectural announcements this week that we think are pretty zen-like. And trust me, we have a few that are still cooking back in the lamps that we are going to look forward to, to talking to people about that we think are a pretty dramatic stick forward and will will be beyond anything that was talked about yet, and some that might not be talked about for a couple of years, but innovation, you know the geek is back. A lot of interesting stuff there, I'm sure you'd agree. Now the geek being back is a very intriguing statement, and I take this to mean that they are just focusing on the raw technology, you know. Obviously Intel just had such a iron grip on the processor market for such a long time, AMD were the ones struggling to compete, and obviously it, Competition is good because it means that one one side of the, co the, the the coin doesn't get lazy thinking, well, there's no reason to innovate because we're winning without bothering, so why would we waste the money? And obviously, AMD came out with Zen and Intel were like, oh no, now we have to actually, you know, try. And here we are a few years later. So I think, you know, Intel have obviously kind of been on the back foot since then, but they're not going to be there forever, at least from the sounds of what Pat is saying here. Whether or not they deliver the knockout punch to Ryzen, obviously considering that obviously Zen 3 is out at the moment, but Zen 4 is not far ahead, and obviously, you know, for Intel's side, there's Alder Lake and then Raptor Lake, so it's definitely going to be interesting, and I, for one, would love to see some real competition in the marketplace once again. But obviously, he didn't just talk about processes, he also talked about GPUs, and how he would be putting pressure on the NVIDIA and GPU lineup for the first time in forever. Now this is actually the first time that Intel have stated in an interview like this that they're going to be putting pressure on NVIDIA and you know directly trying to compete against them. Now NVIDIA are obviously the ones to beat when it comes to you know the very tippy top of the GPU segments. And obviously we might not see the first iteration of XC you know topple the 3080 or whatever. But you know this is Intel's first foray it might take them next time to really put some real pressure on NVIDIA and obviously AMD as well. A third player in the market could be really interesting to shake things up and if Intel actually do manage to put some real pressure on NVIDIA, well, I think we can all agree that would be extremely interesting. Who knows what NVIDIA might decide to come up with because Intel's nipping at their heels, of course. Anything I say about that would be pure speculation, but I can't wait to find out. But we're gonna move on now from Intel to AMD, as we have a couple of things for them. The first of which is some very interesting comments regarding the Samsung Exynos RDNA based chip. Now, the first tweet is from someone called Fronttron on Twitter, and they said, New Exynos with AMD M RDNA will be equipped in the next year Galaxy A series. However, there will be differences. The mid range chips will be a 2CU config, and the flagship chips will be a 4CU config. The clock is around 1 GHz in testing. Since it is using the Cortex A78 instead of the X line, the performance throttling is very low, around 10%. 
even in the 2CU mid-range reports say it's efficient graphics considering its position. And then the insider Raichu, whose name you should be familiar with, they've covered a few different things that we've discussed, and they responded to this tweet saying, quote, about this one, the CU of Exynos GPU seems different from AMD CU. One Exynos GPU CU equals two AMD RDNA 2 CUs, and then undetermined. So it's definitely very possible that there could be some elements of RDNA 3 in here. Now obviously I'm not saying they're RDNA 3 based because obviously they're not. But there could be something that AMD have learned from their work and their research and development on an RDNA 3 that they have implemented into this particular uh, chip for Exynos. And obviously that is pure speculation at this point. But I think it's quite interesting what Raichu had to say about this one. But we're going to move on to Rembrandt up next as Greymon55, again a name you should be very familiar with, had to say about the Zen 3 APU that it apparently is it already in mass production. And that he went on to say, quote, AMD's packaging plant in mainland China will complete six new products in the first half of next year. So first half of 2022, in case you're watching this in the far flung future for some reason. Now obviously we have seen Rembrandt a few times in various leaked roadmaps, either with Zen 3 or Zen 3 Plus microarchitecture, but obviously these are leaked roadmaps and AMD did not confirm its products past 2022, so obviously the rumoured AMD roadmaps are constantly being updated, but from what we have gathered from various leaks and, and so on and so forth, it is of course going to feature Navi 2 integrated graphics, the same graphics that is featured in the Steam Deck handheld gaming console and of course most likely will support more GPU cores and offer higher performance. Obviously what actually happens with you know the, the release date, the specifications and you know what configuration we actually see this launch in, we'll have to wait and see. We are reasonably expecting this to see it being announced at CES, CES excuse me 2022 that would be a reasonable assumption to make that we will see it announced then but again that is not based on any inside information it is purely just an educated guess as to when we will see Rembrandt being officially announced by AMD. And the final thing that I want to discuss in this video is unfortunately a price hike that has been implemented by TSMC. According to the Wall Street Journal who cited unnamed sources, they are going to be planning on hiking up its prices by much as 20% later this year or by early next year. Now obviously TSMC are just in a dominant position themselves right now. They can't cater to clients such as you know AMD, Apple and Qualcomm and so on. So obviously the price hike could affect numerous products if indeed the vendors decide to pass on that price increase to us, the consumer. But what are we going to see, you know, we're we going to see 20% across the board? No, thankfully that is not the case. So basically what we're going to see is a increase between 10 and 20%. It's going to be around 10% for manufacturing processes under 16 nm. Older chip processes will be seeing a 20% price increase. So basically newer stuff, like say, you know, 5NM just for example, is only going to see around 10% increase in price for the chip cost, obviously. And then older stuff that's mostly found in cars will see a 20% price increase. Now, obviously, we do not know for sure this is actually going to happen. This is just according to WSJ's sources. But let's assume for a moment that this is a 100% guarantee. Yep, TSMC are definitely going to increase their prices. For the majority of chips, it's going to be around that 10%. As I already said, anything under 16 nm is not going to be increased at 20%. So, you know, anything modern is only going to be increased uh, around 10%. And obviously it's only for the actual GPU and CPU part. It will not affect the total bill of materials that much because obviously when it comes to an entire graphics card, you're not just, just talking about the GPU chip. There's all sorts of things that go into it, of course. And if indeed the cost doesn't end up being put onto the customer, it could only be a percent or two price increase. And obviously it's very important to remember that this will not infect NVIDIA yet. Now obviously we have been hearing, according to various leakers and so on, that RTX 40 aka Lovelace is going to be on TSMC's 5NM, so it could affect them in the future, but it does not affect them yet. Anyway, that's me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you have a wonderful week. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.